GPU overclocking, NVIDIA GeForce cards, and um, I'm doing this for SLI to show you guys how to get the best overclock with a two or three or more GPU configuration. Of course, you can still apply this if you only have a single video card, um, but I'm going in ex extra details. Now, here's one of my video cards. Alright, so this is one of my 8800 GTs. Alrighty. So, now, I've noticed, and this is a good example, that one of my cards overclocks a little bit better than the other. Now, the default clock on the 8800 GPU on the, on the GPU part is 600 megahertz. These cards, um, this specific edition of the EVGA cards, comes manufacturer overclocked to 650. But I'm going to overclock it any. I'm going to overclock it more anyway. And uh, the default memory is 900 megahertz on the 8800 GT. Now keep in mind we're talking about double DRAM rate, so 900 megahertz is effectively 1800, 1 1.8 gigahertz. We're going to hit two. Everywhere. kinds of things in store. Okay, so I just overclocked the card from 650 to 705 on the GPU and from 950 to 1005, which is effectively 2.010 gigahertz. So, I um, can't remember which card exactly I have it written down somewhere, which overclocks better. But both cards hit 700 on the GPU and 1000 on the memory. Now the memory overclocks further than the, the GPU. And one of the things I like about these cards is that the memory is covered, as far as I can tell, by the entire card, um, the heatsink. So, for example, if you look there, that gray part is the heatsink that covers the entire board. For example, my All in Wonder 9700 Pro did not have any heat sinks or anything covering the memory. So, so anyway, with the fan turned up, I was at 175 Fahrenheit, and now at 100, I am at. Gotta love the crappy choice of color there. 149 if you can't read it. So with this overclock, by default, 
I was hitting one, 175 Fahrenheit with the default clocks, turned up the fan speed to 100%, and overclocked it, and not only am I going to get better FPS, frames per second, in a video game, but it'll, it'll run cooler. Now, if I open up a 3D game, it'll, of course, start getting warmer again as it's actually using it for more than just um, 2D uh, graphics performance here. So, how, when you first start overclocking your GPU, again, like the CPU, you want to do incremental updates to your overclocking. And I recommend doing no more than 5 megahertz. Um, and I do that with both the CPU and the GPU. And I write down, uh, write it down as I go, to, so I remember the next time. If if the system hangs because you overclock too much, it will reset the video card because this is in Windows. It's not like a BIOS or anything. Not that I would know how to get into a BIOS for a video card. So if you freeze up your system then you just reboot and the card will be clocked back to whatever it is. Now, uh, there are some issues of overclocking video cards. Now, for example, if someone has an 8600 graphics card, their card is already very highly clocked, but they only have 128-bit memory interface. So effectively, it doesn't matter if they have two gigahertz effective memory, they're only getting one gigahertz performance because the, me the, the memory interface is how the GPU and the memory on the graphics card communicate. And if you don't have enough of a memory interface, then it starts eroding at your performance. And the 8600 cards and lower all only have 128 bit memory interface. Okay, so. Um, what else here? So, when you are overclocking for SLI, you need to make sure you physically have one of the cards removed. Write down what your maximum overclock on the memory and your maximum overclock on the GPU. In fact, you can do just the GPU or just the memory one at a time and see what their maximum um, clock is individually and then after you've you know crashed the system twice you could do it together and of course overclock them incrementally together so uh, add five to the GPU add five to the memory and see if uh, you get the same or less or more of an overclock overall then you physically remove the card that you've overclocked put in the other card and do the exact same thing because if one card will overclock to 720 megahertz on the GPU but the other card will only overclock to say 660 then obvious when you're in SLI be it 2, 3, or 4 way or, cr or even Crossfire it would, it would technically work this way you, you can only overclock the, C the GPU to the highest speed the highest speed you can get is the lowest common speed. Okay, so it doesn't matter if one GPU can overclock to 720. If the other just does not overclock past 660, neither you're not going to be running SLI with those two particular cards at anything higher than 660 unless you replace the card with another card that has higher overclocking uh, capabilities. Now I don't know where voltage comes into uh, the video cards, and I, and I presume, um, though I wouldn't place all my, my money on this, that the uh, power is all handled internally um, versus with CPUs. Anyway, so that is my 10 minute limit here, or kind of, nine and a half. Um, so remember, when you overclock your two cards, only have one card physically present and write down its serial number. For example, on EVGA, the serial number is going to be on this sticker. So write down the serial number, the GPU overclock, the memory overclock for the video card, and then swap out the video cards and repeat. 
and, uh, and once you find that um, your highest minimals on everything, then uh, you should be good to go. So, anyway, um, if I didn't cover anything, let me know, and uh, I'll try to uh, get it covered. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys around.